All right, traders, to watch this video for Tuesday, August 6th, showing you the SPY, that is a pretty ugly chart, right? The one thing I love about uh, trading, though, and, and being kind of a long bias trader is when the market does get weak, it's usually a fast and furious type of thing. I mean, when you go back and look at charts, you'll see the sell-offs happen pretty damn quick on big volume, right? The same thing, well, I don't know about here yet, but we're certainly overdue for a nice uh, big bounce, but the big spikes down, usually happen pretty quickly and then we go back to normal trading so if you just overlook a chart you'll see that um, so i don't really get too concerned about it and i actually kind of view these sell-offs as a nice opportunity for some decent setups right um, real quick i'm going to show you a l l k for those of you that weren't in chat today nice gap up play let's switch to five minute candles and you got a really kind of handsome inside fives here right there's the opening candle topped out at 64 the secondary candle, uh, I got that wrong. Let me try that again. Let me try that again. Topped out, oh, this is so weird. 64, the second candle, to okay, there it is. Topped out at 63.50. Sorry, I was hovering over. Anyway, long story short, Wayne called this back long through 64 and look at this. Those are five minute candles. So within like 10 minutes, it's up six bucks a share. Um, the man's been on fire lately. Now, 10 minutes in with the Dow down, you know, the market down huge. I just wasn't willing to trade that early today, so I missed it. I didn't take it. I saw it. I didn't disagree with him. Um, but things are just so ugly in the market. I thought, you know what? I'm going to let things iron out a little bit and take a trade later. And you know what? The, the irony is I did next to nothing today. I only had a couple trades all day. Um, and I think I was up 30 bucks uh, or something stupid like that going into the afternoon. And, and real quick, I'll just show you what I did just to, just to prove to people that I still do stupid stuff. Um, I'm trying to figure out just by looking at the chart. All right, I'm guessing somewhere right around here. These are uh, two minute candles. I could be wrong about the time, but it's something like this to give you an example. Of it. So in the afternoon, all of a sudden, the spy gets this massive volume spike. And I told everyone, Chad, hey, this is real buying going on, right? And Apple looks just like this all right so there's real buying going on in the spy um app and i might be off by a couple minutes but it's something like this and then so i just get long but you know i've been waiting to get long apple anyway because i think apple could give a real nice snapback bounce even though i don't hold overnight i still um apple's one of my go-to's you know when the market's really ugly because if the spy starts ripping apple was going to rip too right so anyway there's big volume coming into the spy. I just get long. I didn't use a chart pattern. I didn't use level two. I did. I just get long um, somewhere in here, right? And then it does this, this, something like, and then I hit out here. And then I watch it end up go up, you know, probably, I don't know, 60, 70 cents from where I got long after flushing me out. Anyway, it ended up rolling over, really not being that strong anyway. Um, but the aggravating part to me was for one, Getting long because I see volume coming to the spot. I mean, I, I can look at that and I can say that's not the worst um, rule break I've ever had, right? Because I always try to take an A-plus setup based on the chart, uh, based on level two timing sales and all that. So it's not that hard to argue uh, getting long when you see what I deemed real buying coming into the spy and jumping in Apple at that moment. It's, it's not really hard to make an argument that that trade made sense. As beaten up as Apple was at the time, right? Uh, here's the daily end. So um, it certainly to me made sense if the spy starts getting by and jumping Apple. Anyway, long story short, it turns out some jackass was recirculating a, 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 a news story from 2017. Trump accepts a, a invitation to, to, to meet with President Xi of China. Um, you know, and that obviously the trade war is what's killing everything right now. That's a huge headline. And then, you know, but by the time I get long Apple, and, and that's where that volume came from in the SPY, uh, by the time I get long, then it comes out that that was a, a, a headline some idiot was recirculating from 2017. So if I ever figure out who it is that, that started that, and I ever meet him, I'm punching him in the nose, I promise you. Um, you know, you just, that's just stupid stuff to do. But anyway, long story short, so that, that put me down. I think I lost $300 today, um, which is, you know, I would have been much more proud to just be flat uh, on an ugly day like this, but um, you know that's what happens when 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 you have uh, when you, when you break a rule and you just jump in a trade again. It it wasn't a dumb idea, but when I found out where the volume in the spy was coming from, it just it just reiterated to me 
you should always have a reason chart based for every trade, right? Anyway, let's get in and watch this for tomorrow. VLRX, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit because I actually think this one is kind of interesting. Uh, remember, week tape today, you had, the, you had the big volume gap up about a week ago and it topped out right below three bucks at 299 and it's kind of curling back up. So back through three, this is interesting. Um, AP, especially how weak the market was today. APHA, kind of a quiet inside day after that big volume break yesterday. So you could argue it held up really well in an ugly tape. Pinterest, same thing, held up really well in an ugly tape. NGVC, another one, I'm just gonna be short and sweet on these. Held up really well in an ugly tape. We're gonna watch that one too. Overstock, OSTK, um, was watching this for a long play and it really had a nice candle at one point today, um, closing well off its highs. But another example of holding up well in an ugly tape. I like this big bounce. Um, I think Tilson said something positive about uh, lumber liquidators on Friday, which got a really nice bounce. And then today the market was so ugly. This actually, it's not hard to argue, this held up pretty well, right? Um, topped out at 851, a very narrow range. So if there's any strength in the market, I really like this one over 851 tomorrow. Um, LXU uh, had this gap up here. And it's really just been putting in lower highs, but also higher lows, and it's kind of coiled. Um, I think there was a big insider buy announced in that one today. So that one's holding up in a weak tape. Um, BHAT, recent IPO that had a big move. If I switch to five minute candles, you'll see all of that came at the end of the day. I definitely want to keep my eyes on this one tomorrow. That's quite the move. Um, MCEP, uh, I, don't, I don't love this, but you know, a low price stock that went from 37 cents to 85 cents then a red day, and remember, you remember how ugly the SPY is for the last few days, and then this one actually a little bit of a bottoming tail and closing above its open today, so potential long there tomorrow. I'm gonna watch Apple tomorrow because, again, if there's a bounce in the market, which it's overdue for a bounce, Apple's a pretty good go-to, right? Um, Dish Network, I've been watching, I don't know how many days in a row, it finally at least didn't close red. It closed uh, about where it opened, so potential long tomorrow, especially if there's a market bounce. DAN all the way down to this uh, where it bounced from last time and it's gotten there pretty quickly in a hurry. Potential bounce play, VGR, potential bounce play, big move here. It's almost round trip, but declining volume. Again, with any strength in the market, pretty good candidate. Axel AXL, um, pretty beaten up here over the last few days, as is a lot of stuff I know, but that's another bounce play candidate. Um, couple more, Monster, MNST. Uh, Four days in a row down now in a big kind of ugly day. You can't see it on this chart. Let me slide up this other smaller daily chart that I have. You can see the 200 day right there. Uh, let's get that uh, at 58.23. So if we get down around 58 tomorrow, you might get that 200 day bounce. Um, it's pretty oversold in the short term. So, um, and then lastly, ACST, recent strong stock. And now what, four or five days down in a row into the 20 day, that one goes on bounce watch. Um, that's a lot to digest, and we'll look for gappers as well. Um, you know, there's no reason to try to be here on this market. Just wait for the A-plus setups. Don't do what I did today um, and let a headline burn you, right? I'm going to, you know, tomorrow, it, again, it's a few hundred bucks, and it, it, to me it was money well spent because it was just a reminder, um, and I can't imagine how ugly some people's day must have been today with that ugly, you know, Dow was down uh, almost 1,000 points at one point, so I'm, I'm not at all complaining. Um, I feel like today was a win. But anyway, that was money well spent that I lost today because it was my short-term reminder to uh, not worry about a news headline and think you're jumping in Apple because you think the market's bouncing because of some uh, erroneous headline, right? I'm just going to play the charts and, uh, and uh, hopefully have a really nice day tomorrow. All right, I'm done babbling. We'll see you all in chat tomorrow.